Hello, this is Hans van der Quast, Senior Lecturer at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the WAPOR data from the FAO in an app for field surveying. In a previous video I've demonstrated how to import this data from the WAPOR platform into QGIS using the OGC web services. We've also prepared the raster data with the proper uh, legends. In this video we will start with adding uh, a survey layer and preparing also some online layers that we uh, want to use in the field as a, as a background for our survey. There's another complete tutorial on setting up projects for uh, the input app and uh, synchronizing it with Mergin. We are going to use the same survey layer. First I'm going to add also the online layers. Um, so we can also use it when we have an internet connection in the field. Last video we have seen that we can find in the browser under WMS, FAO Vapor, and then we can drag actual evapotranspiration and interception for Beka, the monthly values, to the map canvas, and we do the same for the gross biomass water productivity. Then we see these online layers back in the layers list. Now what's also useful in the field is to add a Google satellite image. So with the quick map services plugin we can add it. And uh, in the previous video uh, we also loaded the OpenStreetMap layer, which we also see here now on the screen. To make these online layers also offline available, we need to create so-called XYZ tiles MB tiles and therefore we use this plugin tiles XYZ and we also need to change the projection of our project the on-the-fly reprojection should match uh, what we want to use in the field and um, the survey layer so in this case that is zone 36 north UTM on WGS 84 so to have some reference on the area I will switch on one of the layers because I want to use the area that is covered by this layer. In the XYZ Tools plugin, I can then draw a box around this layer. If I choose the layer extent, it will be slightly bigger, so I prefer to do it in this way. You can play with this minimum and maximum zoom level. I'll keep them to 15, and I'll save this as Google Satellite Offline.mb tiles in our project folder. I switch off that layer, otherwise it will be included in the MB tiles, and then I run the algorithm. That takes a bit because it has to download all the information from the internet at the appropriate zoom level that we have selected. Once it's done, we can find the MB tiles layer in the browser panel, and we can simply drag it to the map canvas. And there it is in the Layers panel. Note that the EPSG code is 3857, Google Mercator. When we switch off the Google Online layer, we see now the resolution of the offline MB tiles that we have created. Now I switch on again uh, another layer for the context, because we're going to repeat this procedure for the OpenStreetMap. So we want to create MB tiles. And again, we want to draw a box around the study area. We change the zoom levels again to 15 and we save it to a file, osmoffline.mp tiles. We uncheck our reference uh, boundary and then we run it. Click close and in the browser we now find our OSM offline MB tiles. Remove the other OpenStreetMap online layer to see what it covers. There it is and we see that the amount of detail at zoom level 15 is sufficient. 
zoom to the layer and the next step is to add our survey layer. In a previous video we have prepared a survey layer and I'm going to use the same one. So I go to the browser panel and I'm going to look for that geo package from that other project and I'll drag it to the map canvas. And what we now need to do is to create a geo package in our local folder and in the meantime also change the projection to the one of the project. So in our folder I save a geo package vapor underscore survey and I change the layer name to field observations. I change the projection to UTM 36 North and WGS 84. I can remove the other one. And we can change uh, the symbol of the marker, which is demonstrated also in the other video. I can also use labels. They will show up also in the um, app as we set it here. So, we, for example, you can choose the number of the observation. Save the project. And now we're going to look at the widgets. So here we fill in an alias and for the observation number that's set like this. Observation is a text and I put there that these things are uh, mandatory. For the date I've changed it uh, to the date time widget and changed the format and I use dollar now to get the current date and time picture should be an attachment widget with a relative path and we should use the integrated document viewer from the type image. Land cover type is a value map where we match uh, these options with the number and uh, that will be a drop down menu. Here we can do uh, the crop type in the same way in a value map and it can only be filled in if the land cover type is uh, crops. Then we have the irrigation water source and we also put restrictions on that one so we can only choose it when it's appropriate. Use a slider for the crop cover range and a checkbox for the field size. And for the notes we use a multi-line text edit widget. All these widgets are explained in the other video. We're now going to finalize the styling by choosing a proper blending with the background. Because I would like to see the OpenStreetMap layer through these raster layers so we can navigate easily in the field. This is for the gross biomass water productivity. I'm going to add this as a theme and call it Water Productivity Online. I'm going to make another theme with the Water Productivity Offline. And again set a blending. So we see the OpenStreetMap through. Then I'm going to save this also as a new map theme, add theme, and this is water productivity offline. Then we do this for the actual evapotranspiration. Check the box, choose Blending Mode Multiply, see Open Street Map again to the raster and we add the theme, call it AETI Online, and we do the same for the offline version. Use multiply for the blending mode and we add a theme and that's A E T I offline.
Now we also want the Google Satellite offline layer. So call it a new map theme Google Satellite offline. And we make one for OpenStreetMap online. We call it OSM online. We make one for the Google Satellite online, for in the case we have an internet connection in the field. And the last one is the OSM offline. We can check now all the map themes. So please note that for all these map themes, the survey layer is included. That's important. Otherwise it will not be active in the field when we want to map points. Save the project. Now our project is ready to synchronize with the merging cloud service. If we install the merging plugin, we get this extra functionality in the browser panel. And um, you can create a new project. We call it Vapor underscore survey underscore pk. Make it public so other people can also use it and initialize it from the local drive. This is our folder. We select the folder and we click OK. If the initialization fails for some reason, you can also go to the browser and start merging from there and drag and drop your files from your project folder directly in the merging cloud service via the website. Now we can start the input app on our mobile phone or our tablet. It works on multiple platforms. When we first load it, it will show the last project that we had on our screen. But under my projects, I can also see the other projects that I made. And when I click on the arrow down for the Vapor survey, it will download it. I've, I've accelerated it a bit. And there it loads. And here we see our layer that we had in the project. Um, and we can switch the different map themes when you tap the more button. And when we move, it loads the other tiles. It goes quite smooth. So on the bottom we see uh, the quality of the GPS and we see the button to change the map themes and to add points. Or I loaded the Google Satellite. And I choose the OpenStreetMap. Performance depends on your phone and on the tile settings. Now this is the water productivity with the OpenStreetMap blended. And we can add a point when we tap record point, but because my GPS is out of the scene, it will be somewhere else. But I can fill in the form that we made. and use all the widgets that we created before. Now the point is added uh, also as a feature to our geo package and we can synchronize it back with the server and then through the merge in cloud service we can synchronize our QGIS project and find the point back on the map in QGIS. There's now also a new feature in beta that uh, with data collection with a team uh, you can track the changes and see different versions and manage them. 
Just a few other things to note. If you have multiple survey layers, make sure that those survey layers are not on uh, read only and the ones that you want to have as a background should be read only. That's for the vector layers. And if you want on a point a preview with a picture and a number for example, you need to change in the layer properties this display settings and add this then the picture will also be shown and the ID number in this case. So to learn more about input merging uh, in combination with QGIS, I can really advise to watch also the other video which goes a bit more into detail and to follow the step-by-step -step tutorial that is on GISOpenCourseWare.org.